Science doesn't necessarily need to be researched. <laughs> Let me explain, I know that sounds weird. Well, well, here's an example. I posted a post about how um, the nervous system operates in two fashions. It operates, it operates in more than two fashions, but specifically this was pointing out two different types of ways it operates. It's through either a rapid activation and impulse, that's a short burst, or maybe a longer sustained duration. And you can think about it like this. You can think about it in terms of jumping. When you jump, you have a really short burst of impulse. You gotta jump high. So that's really dependent on the rate. But when you lift a really heavy weight, you have to sustain that, right? You gotta hold that weight at least long enough for say three seconds maybe that lift might take. All right, makes sense so far. And I said that that aspect doesn't necessarily need to be detailed in research, right? Someone asked me, who are the authors behind this information? Well, it's a principle. It's a principle of how the nervous system works. And we can use this principle because we understand mechanistic working patterns, or not patterns, but mechanistic working pathways, maybe the word I can't think. It's early in the morning, bear with me, whatever. You get the idea. So what happens is you can take your force time, which is impulse, and you can say, look, if I have a force or an impulse that's a short burst, I know the nervous system is responsible for that short burst and it has to activate certain pathways rapidly. I know if I have a big magnitude about to sustain it, that nervous system has to sustain that activation. So what you're doing is you're actually taking physics, a macro and output, one side of the equation, and you're using it to reflect the other side of the equation. That is your nervous system, neuromuscular system, I should say, right? Because your nervous system and your muscles. Because we know muscles are what produce force. We know the nervous system is what activates the muscles. So we can flip that coin over. We can look at the physical output and reflect it on the neurological, the muscular output. Now what's key here is within this kind of principle, we're not diving into the minutia of the nervous system. We're not diving in saying the mitochondria or this or that. We still have to take a fairly macro approach because some of those details of the, uh, say the mitochondria or the minutia, the minute stuff within the nervous system hasn't been ironed out. So you can't express you know, your force time curve as something as so small saying, oh, here are the acetylcholine receptors being activated at this time period. Now we have to keep a fairly macro view because the physics itself is a fairly macro view. But on top of that, research hasn't defined all those working principles. So that's the key concept here is we have two working principles that work in symmetry. We have one and the other, but they're actually reflections of each other. We have impulse and neuromuscular activation and in essence, they're kind of one of the same. Granted, they're different actual things in terms of, you know, one's actually in your body and one's what you measure and put in the ground. But the neuromuscular system determines the impulse. The impulse is reflectionary of the neuromuscular system. And so when I say, look, if we want to have something that has a high rate of neural activation and we do an explosive movement like a jump, and then I recommend some jumps that have impulse characteristics that fit that, it's not necessarily something that has to be researched because in essence, it's already been determined physics wise. And we know mechanistically what that determinant is going to be. And so we can say that. Now this is the application of it and some of the theory. So when you start saying like, oh, should I do this long of a jump or that long of a jump, you have to appreciate some of the gray areas because it operates on a spectrum because you might say, well, Max, a squat jump is different than a counter movement jump than a depth jump or so on. But I'm using two general categorical terms. That is speed of impulse or magnitude or duration, I should say. And then you say, look, from there is uh, what, what's the, the force time curve of a movement and the force time curve movement fits that category, then you can use it. So that's my take on it. I don't know if it's early. I hope that made any sense. The idea is that nature and science is cool. Like it's reflectionary. You are a reflection of your environment. And your environment is what creates you. When you measure something like an output, like physics, that is going to be determined by something else. So that macro output that you see on the force plate is a reflection of what's occurring inside the neuromuscular system. Very cool.